welcome to uh, lecture number 32 in this particular lecture uh, we'll continue our topic that is saline water intrusion in coastal aquifers And in this particular uh, lecture, we will cover our uh, previous topic that is Burden, Guyben, Herzberg principle. And Basically, we will continue uh, from our previous lecture and second topic we will cover analytical solution of saline water intrusion in coastal aquifer. So, in our last lecture, uh, we have seen that if we have one phreatic aquifer, this is basically impermeable bottom and this is the location of ocean with our z axis pointing upward and this is the location of interface that is interface between salt water and fresh water and we have ground water table located at this position this is ground water table. So, let us consider any arbitrary section in which this uh, depth below uh, ocean level to the position of uh, interface we can denote it as xi and head above uh, ocean surface that we can denote it as h f and corresponding head in ocean we can denote it as h s. We have seen that uh, with our assumption that is Guyben Herzberg principle we can express this xi in terms of h f as h f uh, rho f by rho s minus rho f into uh, h f. In this particular derivation, we have assumed that our salt water wedge that is basically stationary or stagnant. With this assumption, we will continue our derivation for saline water intrusion in different coastal aquifer formations. That is, uh, first one will be confined, then unconfined and for uh, oceanic islands. 
So, let us consider this ratio rho f by rho s minus rho f as delta. So, with this assumption <coughs> we can continue our derivation. So, first of all let us see that how to use this borden geibel herzberg principle in the field to identify the salt water intrusion in coastal aquifers. So, with this uh, with geibel Hertzberg principle, it is possible to to map the salt water fresh water interface so what are the steps for identification of this salt water fresh water interface so first point is that network of shallow wells are developed for observation of water table height. So, first of all we need to install uh, some uh, good number of piezometers in the field to identify the location of our ground water table locally. Next thing is that we can uh, use contour plotting for this ground water table height distribution. So, contour lines showing the fresh water head H f are drawn using some interpolation method. What are the interpolation methods we can use? One interpolation method may be Krieging or inverse distance weighting method we can utilize. So, for example, we can use Krieging or I D W or any uh, recent techniques for pl uh, plotting our contour lines for the fresh water head H F. Then the interface depth the interface depth xi which is a function of x and y is represented by the same uh, set of contour lines
uh, and this is drawn within the plotting and fourth one the location of aquifer bottom aquifer bottom which is again function b x y is found from geological maps and the final one the intersection of this uh, two surfaces that is the intersection of the two surfaces xi x y and b x y is sought. which represents the salt water tow location. So, with this method let us say we have our coastline like this which is coastline and this is our ocean and with dotted lines I am representing the fresh water equipotential lines these are basically fresh water zone these lines are Uh, fresh water fresh water lines and the location of two that is that is the intersection of two surfaces may be located as this. So, this is basically location of two. So, for this particular location salt water has entered into coastal aquifer. So, salt water invaded zone. So, we have salt water invaded zone, then we have fresh water zone and these are our fresh uh, water equipotential lines. So, uh, using Gaiben Herzberg principle, uh, we can easily identify the tow location in the field. However, for complex geological formation and uh, non stationary interface condition, this is not valid. Gaiben uh, Herzberg principle considers stationary salt water. Uh, salt water wage uh, assumption for its derivation. However, in complex geological conditions, 
we cannot directly uh, use that assumption for practical modeling or practical use. So, next thing we will try to find out the analytical solutions for, for our uh, coastal uh, aquifers. So, for analytical solutions, analytical solutions for stationary interface. So, basically for these solutions, we will utilize our Gaiman Herzberg principle and we will try to see the simplified analytical solutions for uh, simple geological conditions. So, first thing uh, with this analytical solution what we can do? Uh, we can identify the shape of the uh, sharp interface shape of the sharp interface. Next, we can find out the relationship between the extent of sea water intrusion and flow of fresh water to the sea. And why this relationship is necessary? This relationship is necessary for uh, taking aquifer management decisions and sustainable yield uh, identification for coastal aquifers. So, this relationship is necessary for aquifer management decisions or for identification of sustainable yield of a coastal aquifer. So, we will use certain assumptions for our derivation. So, what are these assumptions? First of all, uh, we will consider that aquifer's bottom is horizontal. So, aquifer bottom is horizontal, the flow is assumed to be everywhere perpendicular to coastline. with a stationary interface. That means, our fresh water is 
is moving, but sea water is stationary. And we will consider that sea water wedge length L and one important assumption is that Dupit's assumption of essentially horizontal flow is valid. Dupit assumption of essentially horizontal flow is valid. So, let us consider a case of a confined aquifer and for this condition we will try to find out the nature of interface. So, interface in a confined coastal aquifer. So, interface in a confined coastal aquifer. So, let us draw the conceptual thing. We have horizontal bottom which ensures the horizontal flow in the aquifer towards C. So, thickness of this confined aquifer is B. Again, we have the interface. This point T or capital T is called as toe location. Then length of this wedge that we have already assumed to be L. Then location of sea surface or ocean surface we have this. and location of this ground water table is this green thing. So, for a particular location we have three different distances first one will denote it with xi, next one this is constant depth uh, between ocean surface and the aquifer uh, top that is B and this H f is the fresh water head above ocean surface uh, up to ground water table. So, we can consider this zone as fresh water zone and this one is basically salt water zone. So, with this configuration we can consider that there is horizontal flow which is occurring from aquifer towards the sea and our x axis starts from this toe location towards 
C. So with this fundamental uh, assumptions and configuration, we can start our derivation. What is this Q F not uh, denoted uh, in this position? This is the difference between the total inflow to the aquifer through its right side boundary and the pumping from the aquifer uh, in the aquifer strip. To the right of the point T or location of tau. So, uh, next thing uh, in this particular case, uh, another assumption is there that is B is much much lesser than our wedge length and B is the thickness of aquifer. So, using our Gaibin Hertzberg approximation, we have uh, we have this HF is the fresh water head above ocean uh, surface uh, up to this ground water table. So, we can express our this xi plus b that is the distance below ocean level up to interface that we can denote as denote it as xi plus b equals to rho f by rho s minus rho f into h f or uh, in simplified form xi plus b equals to delta h f or h f we can directly use it as b plus uh, xi plus b by delta. So, for the small configuration uh, we can say that Uh, our fresh water zone we have flow which is k f or we can write it as basic equation of fresh water flow and this is 1 D and only horizontal flow condition. We have K f xi x d h x by d x equals to constant what is this constant? This is Q or flow at location x equals to 0, which is equals to Q f naught. So, 
what is this? This is basically e our flow uh, or Darcyian flow is equals to the flow which is coming from right hand side boundary and basically we have seen this is the difference between total inflow uh, to the aquifer from the right hand side boundary and pumping from the aquifer. So, using this thing we can write again we will just write k f psi x d h f x d x equals to q f naught. For this particular situation now we can use uh, our Kaibin Hertzberg principle. So, we can replace this h f with xi plus b by delta or k f xi plus d by d x b by delta equals to f or this is k f by 2, 2 xi d xi by d x equals to q f naught or this thing we can directly write it as i square d x and the right hand side will have delta q f naught by k f. With this we can use uh, integration. So, from integration we have i square equals to 2 delta q f naught by k f to x plus c, where c is the integration constant now if we have Uh, x equals to L, then this psi value is 0, which implies that C is equals to 2 delta q f by k f into L. So, final equation we can write it as this xi square is equals to 2 delta q f by k f l minus x. So, important thing is that we have considered our coordinate system from toe location towards left. So, if we have x equals to 0 that is at the location of toe we have xi equals to b which is again uh, b is the depth of the confined aquifer. So, this implies that we can write it as b square 2 delta q 
q f naught by k f into L because x equals to 0. So, basically this particular relation relates uh, with uh, our depth of the confined aquifer this is del is the density ratio which is used for Guyven Herzberg principle K f is the uh, fresh water hydraulic conductivity Q f uh, as we have defined uh, in our uh, assumptions and L is the sea water wedge length. So, this is somewhat parabolic in nature. So, we can say that salt water uh, interface in confined aquifer is parabolic par parabolic in nature uh, so next thing we'll start our uh, interface for interface interface uh, in a phreatic <coughs> aquifer so in this phreatic aquifer <coughs> this is also our unconfined aquifer unconfined coastal aquifer <coughs> again we can draw our basic configuration for the problem we have horizontal impermeable bottom this is the location of ocean and location of interface can be denoted with this red line and this is T or 2 location with salt water and fresh water thing and this is width B which is depth uh, below this ocean surface level up to impermeable bottom. Again we have this ground water table is phreatic surface and we can assume some constant recharge rate n. So, with this uh, height of ground water fresh ground water table above ocean level is h f and below this ocean surface level uh, till the interface 
we have distance xi and salt water wedge length this is again L and our coordinate system we are assuming from the toe location towards left and we have again this q f naught which is the difference between the flow which is coming from right side boundary and this is the difference between uh, flow and pumping. So, with this situation this is h s and this precipitation rate or recharge rate this precipitation rate we can consider it as n. So, within this uh, interface if we consider one small elemental portion then we will see that for this uh, elemental portion we have this is n which is recharge from the top and q f is a flow coming to this strip and q f plus d q f by d x into del x this is the distance uh, uh, the flow which is coming from left boundary and which is going out from uh, uh, which is coming from the right boundary and going out from the left boundary. So, if we do mass balance for this particular configuration then we will see that q f minus q f plus d q f by d x into delta x plus you have n into delta x equals to 0 or we have situation where d q f by d x this is n or 0. So, uh, if we use our Darcyan flow conditions then we can easily see that this q f is basically minus k f into h f plus xi into d h by d x. So, uh, this q f at the right hand side boundary we have this value q f is equals to q f naught. So, at this right hand side boundary q f at x equals to 0 equals to q f naught or we can say that minus k f h f plus xi d h by d x equals to q f naught and 
Now, if we apply our Gaiben Hertzberg principle, we have xi equals to delta plus h f for unconfined aquifer or h f is equals to xi by delta. Now, using this Gaiben Hertzberg principle relationship, we can simplify our uh, basic equation as this minus k f this is um, xi by delta plus xi and this is d by dx xi by delta or we can say that k f 1 plus delta by delta square into 2 psi d psi by d x this is equals to q f naught or we can simplify this particular term as d psi square d x <laughs> x not equals to zero <coughs> sorry <coughs> zero minus two q s not f delta square divided by k s one plus delta k f one plus delta again from our uh, fundamental relationship that is uh, we have derived that is k q f d x n equals to 0 and in this one if we substitute k q f then we will get d by d x which is minus k f h f xi d h f d x plus n equals to 0. This is our relation number 1 or 32.1 uh, let us denote it and from this one, if we substitute our uh, Gaiben Hertzberg principle relationship, so k f again this is 1 plus delta divided by delta square d x plus n equals to 0 or uh, we can have a relationship where this d by d x xi square d x equals to minus n 2 n delta square divided by k f 1 plus delta. So, from this one we can derive this square x equals to minus 2 n delta square 
k f 1 plus delta x plus c 1. So, from our relationship from 32.1 we have seen that uh, uh, d of xi square d x at x 0 or x equals to 0 x equals to 0 this value is equals to 2 q f delta square by k f 1 plus delta. So, if we utilize this thing for our case, then we have c 1 is equals to minus 2 q f naught delta square by k f 1 plus delta. So, finally, this particular equation can be written as two Q naught F delta square K F one plus delta. So, again uh, integrating this one we will get xi square equals to minus 2. So, 2 2 will cancel this is x square. So, we have n delta square k f 1 plus delta x square minus 2 q f delta square k f 1 plus delta x plus c 2. This is again one integration constant. So, if we have x equals to 0, we will get xi equals to b. So, with this one uh, we can get that c 2 equals to b square. So, finally, we can write our equation as xi square equals to minus 2 n delta square by k f 1 plus delta into x square by 2. So, 2 2 cancels minus q f delta square by k f 1 plus delta x plus b square or xi square minus b square this is minus delta square by k f 1 plus delta this is 2 q f naught plus n x into x. If we have recharge uh, is equal to 0, then n equals to 0 uh, and uh, we can get a simplified relationship with n equals to 0. And if we have xi equals to 0 at x equals to L, we can get this is b square equals to delta square f 2 q f naught plus n L into L. So, again we have found out one a uh, relationship between depth uh, uh, of this phreatic aquifer from ocean surface to uh, impermeable bottom. Delta is the uh, our Gaiman-Herzberg 
uh, density relationship. Kf is fresh water uh, hydraulic conductivity, Qf uh, as we have defined in our uh, assumptions and N is the recharge rate, L is the length of the wedge. So, with this relationship we can easily find out the shape of the wedge and this is the final relationship between different parameters in confined aquifer. So, we can utilize this thing for our calculations. So, uh, we can conclude our lecture with this particular uh, confined aquifer uh, unconfined aquifer condition unconfined aquifer condition uh, that we have derived here and uh, in the next lecture we will start with uh, the case where we will try to find out the ocean uh, island case in which we will try to utilize the condition for symmetric flow, symmetric radial flow conditions. Thank you.